Hey everyone, welcome back. Professor Hank here. Good to be back here with you today for another Python tutorial video. If you're new to Python, one of the first things you'll notice is that it doesn't use curly braces or keywords to define blocks of code. It uses indentation. So in this video, we'll walk through how code blocks work in Python, why indentation matters, and how to avoid common mistakes that can break your program. So let's go ahead and jump in. So in most programming languages, code blocks are going to group related lines of code, such as an if statement or the body of a function. In Python, a code block is defined by how far it's indented from the left margin. So let's see an example of that. So if I create an if statement, then I'm going to indent a certain distance from the margin. So print, and I might say this is part of the code block, all right? And then I'll put underneath that print, this is outside the block. So this first part right here, because it's indented, that is a block of code, and that block of code belongs to this if statement right here. This following print statement on line four, since it's not indented, it's not part of the if statement. Now, Python's gonna require consistent indentation so that it can understand the structure of your code. Most programmers use four spaces per level and never mix tabs and spaces. So let's see another example of this. So if I create a variable x and I assign to it 10, I might have something that looks like if x is greater than five. Then indented, I might have a couple of statements, whatever I would need in that if statement. So I might say x is greater than 5, since we're checking to see if x is in fact greater than 5. And then here I'm saying I'm still inside the if block. And then down here on line 7, I'm saying print. I'm printing now. We're outside the block. So it's this indentation again that determines the related statements. So this block right here, both those statements are part of it because they're indented to the same level. Now, if you forget to indent or indent inconsistently, Python will produce an error. So let's say that instead of Lining them both up, I indent line four, two spaces, and then line five, the standard four. If I go to run this, you can see there's the unexpected indent. There's an error. Or if I reverse this and I try to run it, we see another error here. An indent does not match any outer indentation level. So we get these errors that happen if it's not consistent. Now, once they're both indented at the same level, four spaces, no problem. Now I could even indent them both, say two spaces, as long as you're consistent, Python can figure it out. But again, the standard is four spaces. An indentation defines the body of control structures, such as if, elif, and else. So let's take a look at an example of that. So if I create a variable age and I assign it to a 20, I can do if age is less than 13, then I'll print you're a child. And if I have LF here and I say age less than 18, I might say you're a teenager. And then I could have the else here that says, you know, you're an adult. Print you're an adult. So in this structure, I've got three blocks. I have a block here, I have a block here, I have a block here. Now, if I put an additional print statement here, I could do something like print, um, you know, buy or something like that or whatever. So this block has got two statements and in both those statements execute if this evaluates to true. And each block under the if, elif, and else must be properly indented in order for it to work. So let's talk about some best practices for your indentation. First one is always use four spaces, never use tabs, use a consistent style throughout your file, and use a code editor that highlights indentation levels or shows invisible characters. So there you have it. That's how code blocks and indentation work in Python. The clean, readable style of Python starts with indentation, and now you know how to use it properly. As usual, if you're a student of mine, you have questions about the content in this video or any of the videos in our courses, feel free to stop by our online Zoom office hours or send me an email via Canvas. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.